Hey, everybody. Good evening, princess. Good evening, princess. Natasha, God Natasha, bless you. Thank you God for joining bless. tonight. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you so much for logging in on tonight. Um, we're getting ready to start our class. And we have also callers that are on the line as well. So we just counted a blessing to be able to um, share, yes. uh, especially in marriage of our experience. Hey, Noe. Amen. We thank God for Shanae. God bless you. Thank you for joining tonight. Praise God. Peggy. Hi, cousin Peggy. God bless. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are blessed and we are excited as well about the topic tonight because we know that this in this area it is a big struggle yes. um, especially when uh, in relationships we know that you know we're trying to build relationships establish them but we also want to know want to make sure that uh, we're walking together in unity so the topic tonight was sent to us uh, as a topic for discussion and remember okay. on every call we make the announcement that if you, there's something that you would like for us to teach, to uh, message us, and we will make sure that uh, we cover the topic. So this topic was inspired um, by one of the ones that do follow on the call. So we just thank God for it. And those that are on Facebook, if you would like to uh, log into the conference line, the number is 319-527. 9821. Hi, Sister Tina. God, God bless, bless you. Thank you for joining tonight. All right. We see everyone logging in mm -hmm. and we're ready. Uh, we're ready to get started. We are uh, just thank God for the impartation on tonight. And who's, who's on the line? Hi, Julie. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Hello? Okay. Praise God. Thank you so much Hello? again. Yes. Who's on the line? Hi, Sister Kathy. Hi, Sister Kathy. Kathy. How Hi. are you? Is Ken going to be able to join tonight? Okay, then at a later time, he can watch us on Facebook Live. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right, great. So we're live right now. Uh, we thank God for our callers that are on the line as well. And we're going to just go ahead and jump into this. Again, we know that um, there's a lot of questions when it comes to uh, relationships where one one of the persons is saved and the mm. other one is not saved and and meeting people that are not saved and how to, should we go about courting and dating so we're going to cover all that tonight so our three scenarios uh will be about singles that are seeking marriage mm -hmm. i know noe her hands up on that one mm -hmm. um the second one will be about couples who are already married and one accepts christ so y'all got married was not saved one gets saved and then while the other one chooses not to accept Christ. That's the Ooh. second scenario. Okay. And the third scenario is um, you've been married. You got married before getting saved. You both get saved. And at some point, one of those persons fall off mm -hmm. from Christ's backslides and you still have the other that is saved. Okay. So these are um, three difficult. Hey, Tracy. Uh, these are three difficult uh, scenarios 
and uh, it's difficult and complicated because a lot of times our heart is involved yes. and we know that we are emotional creatures so before we get into discussing the three scenarios i have a scripture for you which is second corinthians the sixth chapter and the 14th verse so it's second corinthians the sixth chapter and the 14th verse and we're going to go straight into our scriptures tonight so i want to read from the new life translation the new life version and it says do not be joined together with those who do not belong to Christ. Mm. Those that are on the line, if you're not speaking, if you will please mute your phone so we won't hear um, background noise. But again, uh, if you have any questions or comments and you just want to come forth, unmute your phone. You know, we be into, into the talking. So just jump in. Uh, those on the line at any time. Those that are on Facebook Live, you can write in your question or your comment and we'll make sure that we get everyone covered tonight. So our first scripture is 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, um, talking about unequally yoked relationships. And it says from the New Life Version, do not be joined together with those who do not belong to Christ. Mm. How can that which is good get along with that which is bad? How can light be in the same place with darkness? How can Christ get along with the devil? Mm. How can one who has his trust in Christ get along with one who has not put his trust in Christ? Mm. How can the house of God get along with false gods? We are the house of the living God. God has said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. The Lord has said, so come out from among them. Mm -hmm. Do not be joined to them. Touch nothing that is sinful and I will receive you. I will be a father to you. You will be my sons and daughters, says the all powerful God. God bless you, Pastor Ellis, Pastor Smith. Praise God. So here is saying, don't be joined together with unbelievers. Let me read a little bit of the message Bible. Wow. This is uh, 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, the 14th verse says, Don't become partners with those who reject God. Mm. How can you make a partnership out of right and wrong? That's not partnership, that's war. That's what it says in the scripture. That's not partnership, that's war. Is light best friends with dark? Does Christ go scrolling, strolling with the devil? Do trust and mistrust hold hands? So we're going a little deep tonight. Unequally yoked uh, relationships, 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. The Message Bible says we can't become partners with somebody that has rejected God. Wow. So now look, this is in the scenario where I'm single and I'm seeking to be married. I'm single and I may be currently in a relationship. So now here we go. Do not become associated. Do not become yoked with those that do not acknowledge God, has reject God, um, do not even trust in God. The message Bible says that because how can right and wrong get together? How can light and darkness become best friends? And it says that's not partnership, that's war. How is it war? Because you're going to war and bump heads. Um, you're not going to see everything the same. Your level of trust is in God. And those that do not trust God, trust in themselves. So when it's time for faith to kick in, God bless you, Sister Renata. It's time for a faith, a faith to kick in. They're looking at you saying, what are you talking about faith? What are you mm. talking about God? Mm. God going to bring you out of this and that? Look, the scriptures say that's war. So if I am single, why in the world would I want to yoke up with someone that is not saved? Wow. Not sanctified. Go because, ahead, because they look good. <laughs> they look good? They look good. Okay, they look good. And, I got to answer and for that And they're nice. Mm -hmm. And you never know, they might want to change. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got to answer for all of that. Y'all just follow me. That this I'm a little excited. 
because I, I can relate to this. I can relate to this. So I'm, I'm excited. God bless you, Sister Iris. Praise God. So I want to read an excerpt. We're working on a book together. And this is taken from the book that we're writing. Uh, we're trying to now uh, designate time towards that book because we're so torn. As you can see, we're not even home. We're always out and about. So here, I want to read this. It says, singles seeking to be married and are currently in relationships. So this is what we wrote for the book. So here it goes. Did you put yourself in the situation of marrying an unsaved man or woman? We are emotional creatures, so we get attached to a person simply with just a few phone conversations. Or when we begin dating, courting, especially if he or she looks good, mm. smells good, mm. and don't tell me those late night calls all during the night is not stirring up something on the inside. And you can best believe that it is not all talk about the Lord. Mm. Blushing and smiling from the sweet whisperings, words, and fantasizing about being with someone that does not even have a relationship with God. Wow. I can talk about it. This is my personal testimony now. This is me writing. I can talk about it because I have been down the road of desiring and longing to be married, especially after five years of being saved. I was ready to get married. I would dream about it and fantasize about having and being with the man. And yes, I was saved. But we say, oh, the word will keep you and God will be your husband. But what about in the late hours of the night when our soul is longing to be loved and embraced? I found myself in relationships of courting with men that did not know Christ. Again, this is my testimony. They knew of him, but were not completely sold out to God or didn't have a relationship with him. And because of appearances how they looked or the way they talked. In my head, I was like, God can save him. Then they began to show interest in going to church. Why? Because they knew that where, that's where my heart was. Wow. And they were trying to get to my heart. So he didn't really want to be there, but he knew that he had to go in order to win me. Mm. And here is where the manipulation comes in. Mm. To be with you, they will even get up in front of the pastor and congregation and agree to accept Christ as their Lord mm. and personal Savior just to be with you. Wow. Knowing that it's not really their heart's desires. Mm. And then what do we do? We fall for the manipulation and we are all smiles thinking that we've really impacted their lives to the point of them giving their lives to Christ. Then what happens? If we don't go to church, they ain't going. They begin to say things like, you go to church too much. We need some quality time. Then we finally realize that this may not be the person God has for us. Our heart is hurting, aching and breaking. Our head in a cloud, heart breaking at the very thought of ending the relationship with this person because we had our head in the clouds all the time, so busy pleasing our flesh that we did not take a minute to consult God. Wow. Single men and women, don't be tricked by the wolves in sheep clothing. Don't allow your mind and flesh to become caught up in the idea, idea of marriage and excitement of dating that you are no longer able to hear the voice of God nor recognize the warning signs. Mm. So that's a little sneak peek <laughs> of, of what we're putting in our book, y'all. I, I want to, I, can I, go ahead. I have some I stuff go I got to put in that book too. But see, my wife telling you from a woman's point right, of view. Right, and I want my husband now, now to I'm say I'm going to tell from you from a man's point of view. Yes. I was in the same situation at one time when I went to Bishop when, Blank. Blank mm -hmm. church. <laughs> I ain't gonna mention <laughs> no names. But when I was there, I, I had met a young lady and uh, we were talking at the same time and she started coming to church with me. And uh, the day I got 
you know, I renewed myself to Christ. That was before she got there. And now she knew I was saved, and all of a sudden now she wanted to get saved. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe she want to, mm -hmm. you know, change. But I found out something different that it was all a put on, just like my wife mm -hmm. said. And men can be manipulated in that way, too. Mm -hmm. Because if you are a saved man trying to live holy, and then you meet a woman, and she, and she can play that game, too. Oh, yes. I'm going to get saved. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to come to Christ. Yes. And, and, and you all, all smiley mm -hmm. and happy. And thinking, oh, everything gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. And ooh, look at, look, look, look hmm, maybe, maybe it ain't all bad to try to date her. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, yes. maybe she could be my wife because she, she got saved mm -hmm. in front of the whole church. Yes, yes. But when it came down to it, it came to the same objective. Why you go to church so much? Mm -hmm. That's it. It came down to that after a month. Why you go to church so mm -hmm. much? Let's go hang out. You ain't got to go to church. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I, I remembered um, the Bible talking about separating yourself from those that are unbelievers mm -hmm. and those that uh, don't want to serve God. Yes. So I began right then and there to separate myself. And one day she asked me, she said, what is wrong? And I said, I think it's best you go your way and I go mine. Because I have to serve the Lord first. Amen. You don't know what God brought me out of. Mm -hmm. You don't know what I came from. You know? Mm -hmm. So, sometimes we have to make a decision. No matter how good that person looks. Mm -hmm. And no matter how fine they is. And oh, they know how to talk to me. They know how to make me feel good. <laughs> well, I can tell you this much. A saved woman can do the same thing, man. Amen. Praise Amen. God. A good Amen. saved woman could do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And a woman, a good saved man can do the same, same thing. Yes. So you got to be careful and watch. The Bible say watch well as pray. Mm -hmm. So you got to watch and see if that man and that woman is of Christ. Yes. It goes both ways. Mm -hmm. So... Don't think that women the only one get manipulated and fooled. Men get that too, cause mm -hmm. they they say they they living hard for the Lord. And all of a sudden, oh, don't go to church today, baby. Stay in the bed with me, or, mm -hmm. or stay coming to my house, mm -hmm. and we'll hang out. We ain't got to go to church. Mm -hmm. Forget church. I'm Amen. telling you. That's right. That's and right. And before you know it, you back into the world, mm -hmm. and you don't and you wonder how you got there. Mm -hmm. You wonder what happened. I used to go to church every Sunday. I used to go to Bible class and all that. And, and, and the whole thing about it was when I saw against, I thought, oh, she going to start coming to Bible class with me. Nothing didn't happen. <laughs> oh, she going to come to church with me every mm -hmm. Sunday and we're going to be praising God together. That didn't happen. All right. All right. Amen. So Thanks just God. like my wife said, it happens to women, mm -hmm. but it also happens to men. Yes. Because a man is a lot of times just looking at, ooh, she fine. Mm -hmm. Ooh, she look good. Well, oh, we you, look at that too. Yeah. But we always look at, <laughs> you know, man, because your mind is on something else. <laughs> instead of believe, instead of because you all caught up, I now I, I'm I found my bride. I mm -hmm. found somebody. I, I ooh, she getting saved. Oh. Everything all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when you finally, when you really take off all that other stuff mm -hmm. and you really start looking at that woman, yes, you will realize that she's not the one for you. She ain't ready to give it all up yet. And I think that's why I preached last Sunday mm -hmm. about we have to be willing and ready to give it all up. Yes. For God, mm -hmm. God is, should be number one in your life. Mm -hmm. well, I, God is number one in my life before my wife. Mm -hmm. God is number one in her life before me. That's right. And that's how it should be. That's right. Because God got to be first. Mm -hmm. Then your wife, then your husband, then your family, mm -hmm. you know, then your church, then your, you know, the, the you know, all this got to be. Combine into one, but God has got to be first. Amen. And we've got to be strong uh, mm -hmm. Christians. We've got to be uh, unified. 
uh, our mind has to be sound. Mm -hmm. um, what? Mm -hmm. uh, hi, uh, Kendrika, Charity, Daniel, thank you so much for joining. Uh, what I want to say is the thing that irks me the most about women, and I can talk about us because I am one, is, you know, a lot of times we are weak minded and we are vulnerable. And I'm speaking that way because it should be no way that a man that is in jail can say that when he comes out, he's coming to church to get him to find him a woman. How is it that they feel like we are so weak minded mm -hmm. that we will compromise and we will settle for anything? Mm -hmm. And I've heard it more than once. Someone in jail saying they coming out. Oh, when I get out, I'm going to church to find get me a woman. How is it that you can come to a sacred place where we where I'm saved <laughs> and I pray that a lot of the other women are saved and just think that we can be so naive and manipulated because you walked in the church? And I I, I can tell you why because our standard is so low that. They think that we will accept them. Mm -hmm. and, and it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's so bad to the point that women lose their mind. Single women. Let a, unsay, let a, a single man walk in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't care whether he's saved or not. We lose our mind. Everybody all in his face. The man cannot even get a relationship with God because he's surrounded by women. And we don't even know if he's saved or not. We don't even know if he's got a relationship with God. All we know is, oh, that's God said, that's my husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's all we know. But we've got to stop, come to our senses and step back and say, Lord, I know that when you send him, that he's mine. And when you send him every quality that is of you, I know that he will possess. Uh, you can ask the women in my church when I was single, uh, I went through a marriage that ended and um, I was single 10 years and I was hardcore. I was, I was, you don't look at me. Don't say nothing to me. I had a ring. I had a ring on my wedding finger because I did not want to be approached. I used to say, Lord, you have to slam me, pick me up, shake me up and say, Sean, this is your husband. That's just how I was. I was really just hardcore because I was refusing to settle for anything less than God. And I'm like, I'm married to Jesus. <laughs> I'm married to God. And that's the same thing I told my husband sitting here when we, when we reconnected. I said, I'm married to Jesus. He said, well, I'm married to Jesus too. So, you know, it's, we've got to have a standard in God. And we've got to know that it is God. And we've got to know that God, if you sent them to me, I'm preserving myself. I'm keeping myself. And I refuse to look at anything that is not of you anything. I used to always say in my church, and the women know this, I used to say, I'm looking for a man, I ain't like not looking, God is going to send me a man that loves him. Amen. Because if he loves God, he'll know how to love me. Mm -hmm. So we've got to come out of this mentality of, you know, just we look and we look and we look. And I remember one time I first got saved, probably wasn't even a year and a false prophet came to me and said that I was going to be married before the year out. I don't know why she did that because she can totally messed up my mind. Because every single time, ever since then, I was like, is that him? Is that him? And then I'm just looking everywhere. Is that him? Is that him? And it messed me up. I was just gone, fleshly, everything gone. And, and it didn't happen. So I, that's why I said false prophet. Well, what I'm saying is that we've got to be focused on God. Single people do not compromise, especially if you've been in the faith for so long and you have a strong relationship with God. You are not going to want to um, train up a man. Uh, you're not going to want to read them bedtime scripture stories. <laughs> you're going to want somebody that's sound in the faith that when you're going through a trial or tribulation, they're able to war with you. 
they're able to stand with you. And they your head, they your coven. God forbid I place somebody over me that I know is not even connected with God. And I'm calling you my covering. I'm calling you my head. So we've got to be careful. And I'm going to be quiet in a minute. I'm going to let my husband talk. I just want to say this quote. Um, from C.S. Lewis message from Veronica Lally. and the quote says a woman's heart should be so close to God that a man should have to chase him to find her mm. C.S. Lewis I like that a woman's heart should be so close to God that a man should have to chase him to find her Amen. I'm going to let my husband talk. <laughs> Anyone on the line, if you have any uh, questions or comments, you want to jump in, please. Uh, we have callers that are on the line. Those that are on Facebook Live, if you want to type in your questions and your comments. Yes. Uh, right now, we're covering single, uh, being single and not falling into the trap of becoming unequally yoked. Because the scripture let us know that we should not yoke with unbelievers. And how could we yoke and become one with someone that does not even uh, acknowledge God but rejects him? So that was 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Okay. You want to talk or you want me to keep going? Is anybody else have, uh, that's on the phone, uh, if you have anything that you want to say? Okay. I'm just going to say this. No. Okay, I'm just going to say this, that even in the, from the man perspective, men just don't settle for anything. If you're looking to get married, just because that woman look good and she got a nice body, and that's what a lot of men look at, that, oh, that's going to be my wife, because, oh, she look good and she look fine and this and that. But what about her relationship with God? Mm -hmm. And see, I told my wife, you got some, you got some women that are beautiful. But if they don't have a relationship with God, you're going to see their ugly side. Mm. Mm. And when that side, just because they look good, that side can look very ugly. Yes. And if, and if, if God is not in them, then you're going to have some of the worst problems of your life. Because, and, and, I, and I'm even saying it too, I'm going to say this too. Mm -hmm. Even though you marry a saved woman, you got to make sure that she stays safe. Because <laughs> a lot of times, you never know what a woman going to go through. Mm -hmm. Just like a man. you mm -hmm. He'll be saved, but then afterwards, he after y'all uh, uh, got in a relationship, and now y'all got married, now I turn around, uh, he or she now is dipping and dabbing back to the world jumping the gun i'm sorry but <laughs> but i'm serious but it, it goes and now if you start seeing these tendencies before you get married mm -hmm. then you sh you know that person is not gonna change stop telling yourself they gonna change mm -hmm. stop telling yourself oh i that's hang around me and then they'll get saved too i change you <laughs> I, the, yep. I, I be praying for him and the Lord will change yep, him. Yeah, that's right. But see, God not going to force himself on anybody. Mm -hmm. That's why he gave us clear and perfect a choice. Mm -hmm. A choice to serve him. A choice to live holy. A choice to love him. We, no matter it's my wife or my girlfriend or, who, or my boyfriend, you can't make that choice for them. They That's have to right. make it for themselves. Amen. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Is that all right? That's that was beautiful. good right yep. now? Awesome. All right. Noel, we're going to get back to your question. That's actually our third scenario. Um, your question is, if uh, our spouse backslides, what do we do? We're going to cover that in the next topic. This topic here is couples who are already married. And what do I do if I accept Christ? And I'm already married. So we were not saved when we got married. And now I'm deciding, I'm making the decision that I want to serve God. But my spouse does not want to. Mm -hmm. Okay, 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. You know, we like to base everything on scripture. Praise the Lord. Uh, Paul begins to address this scenario in the 12th verse. And he says, for those that are... Christians that are married to non-Christians, mm. 
it says that if the wife, now let's say that the husband gets saved, mm -hmm. and if the wife is willing to continue to live with him, he must not leave her. Ooh. And if a believing woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to continue to live with her, she must not leave him. For the believing wife brings holiness to her marriage. This is the New Living Translation. And the believing husband brings holiness to his marriage. But if the husband or wife who isn't a believer insists on leaving, mm. let them go. Wow. In such cases, the believing husband or wife is no longer bound to the other for God has called you to live in peace. Mm. Don't said, you wise said, realize? You <laughs> said keep her or him? Said let him go. If they choose not, okay, y'all already married. Remember y'all were not saved when you got married. Now one of you are saved and one is not. The one that is not saved, if they choose not to be with you anymore because you are not saved, the Bible said, let them go. But if they still want to be with you and you're saved, then you keep them. Why? Because through your life, through the way that you're carrying yourself, through now they're seeing the changes and the love of God that are in you. Because remember, nobody knows the you better than your spouse. Mm -hmm. Not because you're living together, you're together. So when they begin to see the changes in you, then that could provoke changes in yeah. them. Yeah. And when they see now that, oh, you have so much faith and you're not letting things get to you like you used to and you're not cursing no more, you ain't lying no more, you're just so committed to God and they see your dedication, that could draw them to God. That's why Paul say, don't kick them to the curve now that you saved yeah. and now oh, you go, I don't want no unsaved man. No, mm -hmm. he, no. He, you can't kick the man out the house. That's right. Now, if he choose to leave, the scriptures say, let him go. <laughs> if he choose to leave let him go if, if she, she choose, choose to leave, leave let her go because God has called you to live in peace and trust if that person no longer wants to be with you they're gonna try everything to make your life a living hell mm. they're gonna try everything to sabotage your Christianity you in there listening to your gospel, they turning up their blues, R&B louder, trying to drown out the gospel. Oh my, I mean, everything just to aggravate you. Everything just to get on your nerves because they don't really want to be there. I want to read another version. The Message Bible says, <clears throat> um, the 15th verse says, on the other hand, this is the Message Bible. If the unbelieving spouse walks out, you've got to let him or her go. You don't have to hold on desperately. God has called us to make the best of it as peaceably as we can. And then now the new the message Bible add a little twist to it because it says that you never know, wife. The way you handle this might bring your husband not only back to you, but to God. Then it say, you never know, husband. The way you handle this might bring your wife back to you. Um, not only back to you, but to God. So now in one version where it's saying that let them go and you're no longer bound. That means that, hey, this marriage is over. And the message Bible is saying that let them go, but continue to carry yourself as a child of God. Continue to let your light shine. Continue to love the Lord. And as they see how you handle this situation, you're not bickering. You're not fighting. You're not calling their phone, hanging up and calling them, cussing them out. And I'm um, trying to scandalize them and I'm um, using the children against them. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But because they see how you're handling yourself, now they're saying, wait a minute. I've got to make amends with my marriage wait a minute because they ha handled me with the love of God I want to go to church and know about this God 
My God. Woo, now that's heavy. Any comments? Alright. And that, and you know, and so who got saved first, you or your wife? I did. Okay, so I when did. you got saved, your. Fifteen years of marriage. I remember we had to let a lot of stuff go, man. I mean, it was hard. It was real hard. I ain't gonna tell nobody mm -hmm. it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. It was hard because one day you doing all kind of bad things, hanging out, doing stuff that you know you don't supposed to do, and it feels good because the flesh won it. That's yeah. right. That's and right. When you change, when you change, you get saved. The drinking, the smoking, and all that stuff mm -hmm. gotta go bye bye, mm -hmm. and it's like an overnight thing. So. Your body in some kind of way to feel like they're going withdraw. Like, oh no, what are you doing? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? So I knew, and I knew it wasn't easy. I was paying attention to the whole transaction. I was paying attention. I knew a lot of stuff was harder for her because she was enjoying it just, we did it for 15 years together. Running and stopping and doing all this crazy stuff. And then one day you wake up and say, I'm not going to do it no more. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's just a hard thing for people to do. But you're a living example and you're a living witness of the scripture, of the word yeah. that you accepted Christ. Your wife chose to stay with you, although you were saved now. And because of your life and your lifestyle, it drew her to Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise Amen. Jesus. Either one of us, either one of us went back since, since we got saved. I don't have, but uh, I don't. I don't blame God for it. it. Just it 
just haven't happened yet. Mm-hmm. But a lot of things have happened, and I know it ain't nobody but God that pulled us through all the hard times and things. So, and I was just telling the pastor, life is too short for foolishness. Mm-hmm. We settle for a lot of foolishness and things that we shouldn't even be into. And when your life is gone, what can you do? You only get one life. That's right. <laughs> That's on right. the, on this earth, so why settle for foolishness? Amen. I'd rather be living the living the live again in heaven than to settle for anything and go to hell. Praise God. Amen. And that's the thing. That's the same thing in a relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, we should not just settle for anything just so we can our flesh can feel good. Mm-hmm. But we should we should look at it and say we're gonna settle for something great and that's in God mm-hmm. because you know we can miss out and, and see deep that's a that's a blessing when you it became so easy for you know you to have your for your wife to hear you say that you're giving your life to Christ and then change her life too mm-hmm. but a lot of time in certain situations it's not like that mm-hmm. you get the wife or the husband get mm-hmm. saved and the wife is angry or the husband is angry mm-hmm. oh why you went and did that mm-hmm. oh why you got saved and why you doing that and it don't end up like that all the time mm-hmm. so we got to recognize and if that person say well if you stay keep going to church i'm gonna leave well to god be the glory Amen. Because my whole thing is God got to be first. Mm-hmm. And then you ever heard that old saying? I heard some people. I don't heard men say it. I heard women say, "Either you gonna choose me or God." <laughs> oh yeah, we done heard that too. My well, God. It, wasn't, it really wasn't that easy. I don't want to make it sound like it was that easy. Mm-hmm. I mean, me saying that I was that I wanted to be saved that really wasn't good enough for her. Uh, I think what, what made the difference was me showing her. Exactly. That's the word. That's it. That's, the That's it. You showed her. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times, even, even my wife, a lot of times she still was testing me to see if I really changed or not. <laughs> you and see I that? And I recognized it. Mm-hmm. And I told her, I said, you know, I'm going to change. And I told her that I was going to That's it. That you committed to God and exactly. first, and you ain't doing none of that foolishness that you was doing in the past. Amen. So, Amen. For a sanctified husband. I saw that in my relationship. <laughs> I saw that it was tested because a lot of times, a lot of times, I can remember just simple things. You know that she would bring up and, and would see that if I was doing, and before I would be like, "Yeah, let's do it," and then you know, once I got saved, I was like, "Nah, God ain't gonna like that." And, and, and even sometimes I would say, well, now I got to talk to the boss and let me see if I can do that. Because <laughs> I don't want to do nothing, you know, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. And I would seek and, and ask for help. Mm-hmm. And, and where, where I felt that we were weak at, you know, I didn't let my pride get in the way mm-hmm. of me finding out what was right and what was wrong. <laughs> and that's mm-hmm. what got me to starting to read the Bible and find out for myself also, mm-hmm. you know, what was wrong and what was right. Mm-hmm. And just following what the words say, because I didn't want to disappoint God, you know, and I still feel that way today, I don't want to disappoint God, I just want to, I just want to do the best I can do so I can make it to heaven and, and without any complication. <laughs> Praise God. It's scary when they say, uh, a lot of people that's going to church ain't going to make it, that's kind of scary to me. <laughs> Dang. I yeah. always be thinking about that, how mm-hmm. can the Bible tell you a lot of people that's in church ain't mm-hmm. going to make it? That's right. Oh, yeah, that's it's right. Say, that's crazy. It said the righteous is going to make it in scarcely. scarcely. Yes. Yes. And judgment is going to start at the house of God. Yeah. Amen. And he said he's coming for a church Mm. without a spot or a wrinkle. Amen. And look at the word being manifested. A sanctified husband sanctifies the wife. Mm -hmm. Sanctified wife sanctifies Uh, the the husband. husband. So those that are in this situation right now do not give up. Do not lose hope. Just continue to let your light shine. Continue to love God. Continue to praise him. Continue to reverence him. When you see that they're provoking you to anger, don't get angry. Do the opposite. Remember, you're trying to draw them. 
So you're no longer behaving the way that you behaved before you received Christ. You're trying to draw them. You want to let them know that you've been cleansed. You've been purified. You are changed. Things that used to bother me in the past and how you used to jug at me and I would retaliate and I'm brawling and I'm fussing and I'm screaming. I'm not behaving that way anymore. Why? Because I have the love of oh, God. God. And then they begin to look back and say, oh, well, yeah, look like they really changed. And that's mm -hmm. the response we want to uh, provoke. We want them to see that, yes, and the same God that changed me is the same God that can change you. And you know I was a mess. You know I was messed up, jacked up. And if God could do it for me, me, he can do it for you. Mm -hmm. Praise right. the Lord. We just got a whole fast. And don't give up. Yes, don't give up. Yes. Don't give up. One thing I want to say on to that, even when the person tell you, look, it's over. I, you know, you ain't the same what you used to be. And I need somebody that, that want to have fun, that want to do stuff. And, 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 you know, you all, you don't have to get mad over that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to let yourself get upset. You tell them, look, as, as a man of God, we can still have fun, mm -hmm. but we're not going to be doing the same things That's we right. used to do. That's right. You know, and as a woman of God, we're not going to do the same mm -hmm. things we used to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to live according to the word of God, whatever yes. this Bible tell me to do. That's how I'm going to live my life. Mm -hmm. Now, it's up to you. If you want to stay in this relationship, this is what's going to happen. But as long as you know me, then I'm going to live mm -hmm. according to what God says yes. because we're already married now we already married mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. and uh it ain't just no and then you know it ain't like they just gonna run and just leave right away mm -hmm. but you why while they're talking about leaving you just pray you just mm -hmm. give it over to God mm -hmm. and you let God you like my wife said you keep on moving you keep on doing what thus saith the Lord That's right. in your life mm -hmm. That don't mean you block them out and, oh, you just don't talk to them. No, no, you still be that wife. Shout you still be that husband. Mm -hmm. Don't run away from not, you know, like, oh, well, they ain't saved, so I don't have to talk to them no more. <laughs> okay. I don't have to be with them no mm -hmm. more. I don't have to cook for him mm -hmm. no more. All right, I don't have on. to do these things Come no more. On. No, you still do That's what God right. That's right. said a wife should do. You Amen. still do what a husband That's should do. That's it. Amen. Praise God. Thank Is that you, all right? Jesus. That's wonderful. Amen. Someone was trying to come forth. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I heard somebody <laughs> say, was saying something. Go ahead and say, what, what was you about to say? I think it was talking to somebody. Oh, okay. Praise God. Woo! And we're flowing right along. I think um, some people have some comments. Their, yeah, they, they're commenting good. Okay. They're just enjoying and loving it. Praise God. Amen. Um, we have a, the question from Noel that we're going to address uh, about what if, then that leads us into the third scenario. Ooh, I love you, the same scenario as our caller said, they're married, one gets saved, then the other one gets saved, and you're serving God together. But what happens when one of them backslides? Mm. Go back into the world. Mm. Leave God. So remember, y'all started together. off together, not saved. Then one got saved. Then the other spouse got saved. You were worshiping together, praying together. And then somehow along the way, the spouse falls off. One falls off. So now one doesn't want to go to church anymore. Mm -hmm. One has turned back to their old ways. Mm -hmm. One has turned back to the way of the world. Mm -hmm. and But you're still saved. Now, what is it that I'm to do? And we go to the scripture. Because we want to feel like, okay, if you ain't going to serve God, then I'm going to leave you. I mm -hmm. want out of this marriage. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that um, divorce, Matthew 19, 7 through 9 that we can't divorce unless it is for spiritual sexual yeah. so if my spouse is not committing adultery mm -hmm. or having sex outside of the marriage even though they've turned back to the world guess what i am still their wife That's and right. they are still my husband exactly. and although they chose not to serve god 
Isn't this the greatest time for my light to shine? Mm. Through this affliction, through this tribulation, because I, I can imagine the one that still saved is hurt now because, you know, we are, we were in this together. And now you see that they're going back to either smoking. They're going back to drinking. Cursing. They're going back to cursing. They're going back to lying. They're going back to clubbing. They're going back to old things that they gave up and forsake, but now they got snatched back by the world. Mm -hmm. So now, praying wife, what you going to do? Mm. So now, praying husband, what are you going to do? Mm. Amen. Now it's time to go into warfare because I refuse to let the enemy have what I know God has given me and not only gave me, but guess what? We walk together in the anointing. Mm. We walk together in the power of God. So now they've got to see me go into action. And you say, how do they see me? I'm praying like my husband mentioned. I'm praying like never before. I'm walking through the house. I'm rebuking the devil. I'm binding him. He's got to get out of here. Like Jesus said, I'm fasting and I'm praying because these things go out by fasting and praying. I'm not giving up hope. I'm not giving up faith. And now more than ever, my spouse needs to see that I trust God. Mm -hmm. My spouse needs to see that I have not given up on them, although they have given up on God. Mm -hmm. That's easier said than done. They've mm -hmm. given up on God. They say, I don't want to have nothing else to do with your God. That's what they say. Not, I don't want nothing else to do with your God. But do I say, oh, no, then I want a divorce? I don't have grounds for divorce. Guess what? He's still here. He ain't leave. He ain't going nowhere. He's still here. I can't kick him out the house. But guess what? I can go into warfare. I can pray. I can seek God. God bless you, Sister Anita. Suzanne, mm -hmm. God bless you. Thank you for joining. I, I'm going into warfare. Why? Because I refuse to let the enemy have what I know was given to God. And that's the same uh, scenario with me. That's what I said. That's you know? it. And, 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 and as Ain't a man, your wife husband. walking around and mm. she don't want to be, she want to go back to her old mm. days and when she was younger and hang out with her girls and, and not be around you and want to do all the things that she want to do. But you still got to be that praying husband. That's it. That don't mm -hmm. mean you walk out and say, forget her. Uh, I just want a divorce. Mm -hmm. It's over. It, it, it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. No, you still be that man of God. You still pray. You still give her over to God. Say, Lord, you Lord, you, you know God. Strengthen her mind. Say, yes. Get her back in the hope, God. Let her believe in and trust in you again. Mm -hmm. Lord, let us see that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. And God, that you're going to change our situation mm -hmm. around. That you're going to change her mindset and let us see. Yes. Mm. So guess what? Now we in prayer mode. Mm -hmm. I'm not nagging you. I'm not fussing with you. I'm not. You not taking me back from where God delivered me from mm -hmm. because you were determined to go back. Mm -hmm. So now more than ever, my light have to shine so my spouse can see. Yes, you are married to a warrior. No warrior. Yes, right. <laughs> I'm gonna pray. Yes, my, my wife. Is, my, <laughs> hey. Hey, my husband is a warrior. Cause why? He's still praying. That's it. Even That's though it. he know I, I I ain't serving mm -hmm. God and I'm not doing right. Mm -hmm. And and here's the thing. There's another part to that. What and you and God just really just popped that in my spirit that I want to put out there right now. Even after you're married, let's say your husband or your wife, they uh they go into church, they say you know, and they putting on that act. Mm -hmm. Like they save, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when they get in front of the church people, come on, come they on. Save, they say they sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But when they get home with you, they're a whole nother person. Jesus, my God. They're a whole nother person. Mm -hmm. They're not the same because in the front of, oh man, I'm looking at them in front of the pastor and they, they all like nothing going on mm -hmm. and they spiritual and they know the word and <laughs> they can quote some scriptures and they can tell you this and tell you that. And, and your wife and your husband looking at you like, yeah, my God, mm -hmm. 
she don't do that at the house. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That expression shows up in church because that's what I do. I look at the spouse to see how they responded. Mm -hmm. I look at them to see yeah. how they amen. And then <laughs> by the time they get, when they get home, it's a whole nother person. <laughs> amen. That's right. You know how somebody always look at themselves in another, as another person, mm -hmm. subject themselves as the other person. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when they're in church, they one way, but when yes. they're home, mm -hmm. they're something else mm -hmm. that they say they not. That's it. And see, a lot of times, those things, God will put that to a shame. Mm -hmm. And God will let it come out like yes. it never came out before. Yes. And now you're looking at bad because now the pastor know <laughs> how you really is. Yes. My God. My God. So but don't think you, I just want to say this, don't think they fooling anybody. Mm -hmm. Don't think that they get in front of the pastor and they think they're fooling somebody. But they don't know that God has already shown it to the pastor. Mm -hmm. The pastor just waiting for that time when God said, just release it and let yes, them know. Yes, yes. And you don't give up. Yeah. And you don't get discouraged. Yeah. I'm talking to the husband or the wife. Yeah. You don't give up. You don't get discouraged. discouraged. Second Peter 1 begin to talk about that I we have the divine nature of God. Mm -hmm. And because we have the divine nature of God, that he has given us everything that we need mm. in order to live a holy life. Glory to God. So it doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter what your struggle is. It doesn't matter even what your spouse is taking you through because they've disconnected with God. You have the divine nature of God, oh God. and the spirit of God is in you. So what happens? Now I know that I'm walking in his image because I am of his divine nature. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold on to the promise of of God. Every promise that God gave me, every word that was spoken over my life, I've got to hold on to that promise. When you get a chance, read 2 Peter, the first chapter. It begins to say that because we have everything we need to live a godly life, we also have the promises so we can escape the world of corruption. Yes, so right. it doesn't matter what is going on in our environment, in our atmosphere, because we have God's promises. It will not touch us. It will not affect us. I know that we're emotional and we can feel it. But guess what? On the outward man, you'll still see me standing strong and standing tall. And that's what we've got to do as a body of Christ. Do not be um, discouraged because you see that your husband or your spouse or the one that you're engaged to be married to now are falling back. Mm. What you do, you stand on your most holy faith. Second Peter begin to talk about the characteristics of God. Begin to say that we've got make my, we've got to make every effort to add to our faith virtue. That means that although you are not doing right, I'm determined to do right. So first I've got to have the foundation of faith. And if I've got the foundation of faith, on top of my faith, I'm putting virtue. I'm determined to do what's right. It didn't begin to say that I've got to put on knowledge. So now, God, I see what my struggle is. I know what I'm going through. Now, mm -hmm. let me get in this scripture. Let me get in this Bible. Let me find where it is that God want me to do. God, open up the scriptures to me so I know how to pray against this spirit that's attacking my wife. Give me scriptures. Give me knowledge on what to do and what to say. And when we we obtain that knowledge, then we know how to respond. We know when to shut up and don't say nothing. We have to add then self-control. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Self-control, temperance. That means that although they're barking at me and they're trying to get a response from me, I'm still saying, Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm not even raising my voice. I'm not changing my tone. And if you be, don't be careful, I'll break out in the song because I have self-control. And that's what we've got to do. We add on. First, we got the faith, the foundation, then we've got the virtue, then we have knowledge, and then we have self-control, and then we have godliness, which means that I am God-like. I'm walking in the steps of Christ, and just as he went through, I'm going to go through. Just as he suffered, I'm going to suffer. And guess what? Now my suffering is through my spouse, Amen. my companion. 
who was placed here to make me happy, that we were supposed to walk with in full agreement, but now all of a sudden, it seems like they've gone back, they've changed, but guess what? I'm going to let my light shine because a sanctified wife will sanctify the husband and a sanctified husband will I'll sanctify, sanctify the, the wife. wife. Then it began to say that I've got to have brotherly kindness and brotherly love. So guess what? In the midst of that, I'm still going to show you affection. I'm still going to love on you. Still I'm gonna still going to cook for you. Still gonna I'm still going to wash clothes. I'm going to be the best wife. I'm going to be your best companion. You may try to push me out the way, but what do I do i'm grabbing your hand baby let's pray let's kneel down let's we're gonna bind every strong who i may even be pushed away but guess what i can still walk through my house and begin to give god praise and pray without ceasing seeking god and this love this love i'm gonna flow the love on him he's gonna know she's gonna know that i love her why because i'm still loving you regardless one day you're gonna see yourself one day you're going to see how you treated me. Mm -hmm. One day you're going to see that I didn't even help raise up a hand against you to fight against you. But all I was was that praying man. Mm -hmm. All I was was that praying woman. Why? Because I have these qualities that I possess. So I'm here to encourage you. We're encouraging you today. Yes. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Second Peter begin to say we need all these qualities. And it says once we do this and we have these qualities will begin to grow that yes, means that we're, we're not fussing about the same thing we i done graduated from that now we fussed about that last week i done added self-control so i know that i'm growing praise mm -hmm. god i know that i'm growing and it begin to say and those that refuse to take on these qualities they are blind mm. but then it says to work hard to prove that you are really among the God's called and chosen. Mm -hmm. Work hard. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we say, I ain't got to prove nothing to him. Yeah. I ain't got to prove nothing to uh -huh. her. But the scriptures say work hard mm -hmm. to prove that you are really among the called and you are really among the chosen. So, yes, I do have something to prove. Yes. I do have something to prove. I'm proving to you that although you've slipped away, I'm still going to be closer to God. Mm -hmm. Although you call me all kind of names, guess what? I'm, I'm still, still going to closer, closer to, God. to God. I'm still going to love you anyhow. I'm still going to cook you breakfast. I'm still going to iron you clothes. I'm still going to. I told my husband, if I'm dying, the next wife is going to be out of there. Why they going to be out of there? Because my husband going to talk so much about me and what I did as a wife and what I did for him that they ain't going to be able to stand it. <laughs> Glory to God. They're not going to be able to stand it because I'm going to be the best wife. And that's what we've got to do. Be the best husband. Glory to God. And let our light shine. Let it shine. It say you will never fall. You'll never fall away mm -hmm. if you have these qualities and that we will have a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom. Praise the and Lord. And I heard my wife talk about the wife, you know, being that great wife. And I'm going to tell you, you, men, we got to still be that great man. Mm -hmm. We can't let nothing deter us. We can't let yes. them get on our nerves. Yes. You got to keep praying. You keep walking through that house. Mm -hmm. Keep anointing that house. Yes. Keep letting, proclaiming, letting the devil know you ain't got no control mm -hmm. in my home. That's right. And you're not going to be staying in my wife. You're not going to get to my Jesus. wife. And uh, you keep praying that. Yes. You keep pushing that. Yes. You keep doing the things you always do. Mm -hmm. Don't stop. Keep putting mm -hmm. gas in her car. <laughs> Keep that, honey, how much money you need. Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, come on, let me take you out to mm -hmm. dinner. Keep taking her out. Don't mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm. St keep showing her that romance, yes. that, that romantic part of you. Mm -hmm. And you talk to her and tell her you love her. Yes. Even yes. when she me and me, sometimes you just got to hug her and say, I love you. <laughs> I love you. And she wouldn't even understand why. <laughs> Why is he keep? And I'm saying all this stuff, and he's still talking. About he on, loved me. Come on, Thank and, you, and, Jesus. And, and, and tell her God loves her too. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you. 
Yes. Don't don't worry about all that mm -hmm. other stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't let stuff get to your nerve like that. Because if you Hallelujah. let it get to you, then uh huh, you are not showing what God wants you to show who you are in Him. Hallelujah. Just like we'll do it for a friend, we'll mm -hmm. do it for a family That's member. Right. We right. should be able to do it for our wives. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if your mama says something to you, mean you're gonna hush up and you're gonna take it. <laughs> So the same thing with your wife. Mm -hmm. I ain't telling you to hush up, but I'm telling you to just show her some love. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what, if she ain't going to serve God, you mm -hmm. keep loving on her. That's right. That's right. You keep telling her, I love you and Jesus loves mm -hmm. you too. Amen. And she may not even want to hear that, but you keep telling her. That's right. That's right. Baby, don't you know I love you? Mm -hmm. Don't you know Jesus love you too? Yes. Don't you know God want nothing but the best for you? Thank Don't you Jesus. know that God loves you just like he loves me? Yes. And that's why we entwine together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. But we have to be that example in that man. Whoever is the one that's saved and the one that's not, we still have to be that example. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We can't give up, men. We can't not surrender. We can't walk out and say, I'm leaving. I ain't coming back. We got to be that man of God. Yes. See, that's when you know you, you, you're a true man. Mm -hmm. Because why? I can go through some things and I can still stay in my marriage. <laughs> and I can keep praying. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I'm a true believer. Mm -hmm. And I know I, I'm a believer. I know that if I just... Mm, just start giving it over to God. Say, Lord, you take care of this. God, I give Thank my Jesus. wife to you. God bless her, God. Hallelujah. Touch her heart. Thank you. Touch Jesus. her mind. Glory to God. God, wake her up. Let her see the glory of you. Hallelujah. Like Thank I see the glory. Jesus. And when your wife see you still praying and, and still reading your Bible. Yes. And still turning on your music, praising God. Thank and see you God. going to church every Jesus. Sunday. Jesus. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? Thank you, God. And when you keep doing the things that God have called you to do, you can you'll see God's that stuff will start breaking up. Mm. Before you know it, God gonna hit that heart. Yes. And she's gonna say, What have I done? Mm. I got a man, he, he and I talk to him, I treat him badly, but he's still showing me love. Hallelujah. He's still treating me like a woman. Thank you, Jesus. He ain't hit me, mm -hmm. he ain't knocked me down, mm -hmm. he ain't went upside my head mm -hmm. yet, mm -hmm. you know, but he's talking to me and he's showing me how, how good God is. Amen, praise God. He's showing me love, Thank he's you, showing Jesus. me understanding, Hallelujah. he's showing me patience. Thank you, Jesus. Even when I be nasty to mm -hmm. him. Thank you, God. My Thank God. You, Jesus. Thank so you, I just Jesus. want all the men to understand you, that it's, it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. And and I know even with my wife, if she ever was to get married again, she she could tell her <laughs> husband, man, my my my, uh, my other husband ain't never did that. <laughs> He ain't never talk to me like that. He ain't never <laughs> treat me like that. Amen. Amen. That's it right. goes both ways. That's right. Amen. So Praise we gotta God. show. No matter if if they mean to us, men, if they nasty with us, you still show love. And if she decides to leave anyway, to God be the glory. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. But it has to be their decision. Amen. Not yours. Were you ready to run out and just forget everything? Amen. Someone's trying to come forth on the line. Inez Williams. God bless you. God bless. Thank you. God bless. Yeah. <laughs> I have, is it okay to ask a question? Of course. Yes. Um, can you be both in the ministry and be unequally yoked? So they're going to church but not really saved? That's the question? Right. They're saved but they're not professing holiness. Mm-hmm. Can we be unequally yoked even if we're born in church and he's saved and I'm saved, but I'm filled with the Holy Spirit and he may not be? Yes. Will we be considered unequally yoked? Yes, because he doesn't have the spirit of God. So even things that, y'all, that's my cousin, even things that um, you tolerate and you can go through, um, you're able to stand, you're able to war, but because he doesn't have the spirit of God, is lopsided because now you're fervently going forth 
you're fervently pressing. You're for anybody can say that I'm saved, but do we have the Holy Spirit that we're able to? That's why the second Peter said that I've given you the divine spirit. Praise God. You've got power. You have the divine nature of God. You've got power. But what about if you're walking with someone that is powerless? Mm -hmm. That you can't, because uh, uh, I'm telling you, a saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled husband and wife should be able to lock hands and pray down every demonic force, every spirit, everything uh, is a force to be reckoned with. So then when it's uneven, it it makes it where one has to war more than the other one. It, it's not, there's not total agreement and that's why you feel stressed. And that's why you feel like you're fighting by yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why you feel like, you know, what is the use? Like, when is he ever going to come up? When is he ever going to, you know, show? He has to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the own, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, by his spirit. So if the spirit of God is not there, then there is unequal balance. And that's why you feel tired and feel like it's a struggle and feel like it's a pull. And feel like, wait a minute, this, we should be carrying this together. I, I shouldn't be carrying this by myself. We should be carrying this together. So now, you know, baby, I know you say you say, but let's seek the Holy Ghost together. Let, let's see God together uh, and right, remember he has to want it first of all <laughs> do you want the spirit of God do you want to feel a change do you want to feel a difference because if we don't have the spirit of God we'll still be smoking we'll still be drinking we'll still be cursing oh yeah I'm saved I go to church I'm saved but I don't possess his spirit so what is it that is keeping me what is it that is I'm able to fight against temptation? What in me is helping me to fight against temptation if the spirit of God is not there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I believe that it's a, a heart to heart is needed. And he may have questions and may want to know why you feel this way and may. And then you tell him you be open, you be honest and you tell him how you feel like it is not even. And you are my head. You are you the head of the household, not mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. You should be praying harder than me. You you're directly connected to God, and you've got to get account to God. And then I come in. So why is it that I'm the only one warring? Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Why is it that I'm the only one praying? <laughs> why is it that I'm the only one fasting and you the head? You know, don't be sassy, but. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and and the good thing, and the good thing about it, well, I want to say is this: you know, when you do, if you do sit down and talk with him about it, you know, just you know, you don't have to just say it like my wife said in a sassy way, mm -hmm. you know, but talk to him, say, honey, I want you to have that relationship because you are the head. Mm -hmm. You gotta boost him up a little bit, mm -hmm. baby. You and you the head of this house. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't in place, who protecting us from the enemy? Yeah, hallelujah. Who praying for us? Because God looking at you as the head. Yes. When, at, when Adam and Eve was in that garden, God didn't go to Eve. He went to Adam. <laughs> yes, amen. He went looking for Adam. That's right. And he questioned <laughs> Adam. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Adam was the head of his home. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, Thank for <laughs> <laughs> so if we don't, if, if we don't, if a man is not, of the, I, I've, I've said this to counsel in counseling with men before, and I told them, if you are not the head, who is? Oh, my Lord. If the enemy is able to walk in your house and walk all through your house, my like he God. owns something. And your Jesus. wife sitting there, and your children sitting there, and he just tearing up your household mm, like it ain't nothing. Then some, as you as the head, you're responsible. Mm. God ain't holding My your wife responsible. God. God holding you responsible. Mm, Jesus. And see, sometimes I know a lot of men, we don't like to be the bad guy to our children. We don't like to be the bad guy all the time. But somebody got to be the one to say, no, this is not right. You know? So if that's the husband, 
And he telling the kid, hey, look, it's, this is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And this is the way it's going to be. Right. And I'm sorry you feel that way. Mm -hmm. But this is what I have to do because this is what God has proclaimed me to do. Amen. So we have to, men, we have to step up. Y'all hear what I just said? We have to step up and be that man of God who God has called us to be. The head of our home. And I've said this before, just because you the head don't mean that your wife is your slave or your daughter or your do or your girl. pet or your do girl or whatever you think she is or I, I, I'm in charge. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. Amen. That is your that that is your bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh. My the Bible says if you hurt her, if you hurt her, you hurting yourself. Jesus. Amen. And women, we have to allow them to be the head. That's right. Which means that we don't wear the pants, they do. Woo! Jesus. Thank you so much, cuz. We love you. <laughs> oh, God is good. Amen. So there's another question. What if my spouse don't want to pray with me? I feel lonely in this relationship. So you have a relationship with God. And you cannot make your husband pray with you, mm -hmm. but you can pray to God who you are in relationship with to touch the heart of your husband that he would want to pray with you. So your prayers are not going to stop. You're going to continue to pray. Amen. You're going to continue to seek God. You're going to continue to trust God. And when your husband see that you're not stopping in your prayers, one day he's going to grab your hand. <laughs> mm hmm he going to grab it and he going to want to pray. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So that's the question on Facebook. Said, what if my spouse don't want to pray? I feel lonely in this relationship. Just continue to put your relationship in God and continue to pray. Continue to pray and ask God to touch the heart of your husband. So you've got to continue to be diligent in your prayer. That's right. And don't let that spirit of loneliness overtake you because then next comes depression. And I, one thing I always hear my wife say, don't come off the wall. Mm. If God ain't did it yet, don't you come off that wall. That's right. You keep praying, mm -hmm. men and women. Yeah. You keep praying mm -hmm. for that spouse. Don't come off the wall. Don't say, well, look, God ain't going to do it. Mm -hmm. No, you keep fighting mm -hmm. for your marriage. You yes. keep fighting for God to change their heart. Yes. You keep fighting. You <laughs> see, changes will come. Thank you, Jesus. May not come when you want it to, but God, in the word, it, <laughs> it, he, it will come. Praise it God. It will come to pass. Sister Julie said we need a relationship conference. Well, let's Praise do it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Sister Julie, you going to be there? Hallelujah. <laughs> Another question is, does unequally yoke only apply to one person that is saved and the other person is not saved? Okay, so 2 Corinthians 6 says that when we connect to an unbeliever, so, yes, that's what unequally yoked is. Yes. If we're someone unbeliever, so we're light in their darkness. Um, if two people are saved, they may not be on the same level in God as far as their relationships or how they pray or mm -hmm. how they fast. Because although we're married, we may pray different. We may fast. Our fasting hours totally different. We're walking the same walk, Ooh. but we are not. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> oh, you just hit on something just now that made me think. Suppose you in a relationship and something similar to this, uh, where that man or that woman don't believe how you believe. They don't believe what your Bible say, but they have their own belief of what they think, the earth, mother earth or whatever it is, or what a, a, a something else. Yeah. Right there, that should give you a, a warning sign before you even say, I'm going to be married. Mm -hmm. And if that's already your husband, you should have found that out before you married him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so don't be surprised when he come and say, well, you married me like this. You knew I, you know, I, I care about Mother Earth and I, I don't believe in God. The or, positive energy. Or, uh, the positive energy and, uh, <laughs> and uh, or, 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 you know, uh, I, I'm in the Quran or I'm into this or I'm into that, that. And we don't believe like that. And we don't. We don't believe in Jesus Christ, so we don't believe in that, uh, whatever. You know, right then and there, when that's why when you get in, a, when you meet somebody, 
ask them those questions. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to ask. What you know? I'm a Christian. Uh, what about yourself? Do you go to church? <laughs> Did you go to church? What church you go to? I had somebody I tried like that one time, and I think. I think I ain't gonna say no names, but I tried somebody like that one time, and I asked them, "What church you go to?" Uh, and they told me, "I said, well, what's your pastor name?" Uh, uh, <laughs> couldn't even tell me the pastor name. <laughs> and, and my and my member was looking at me, and I was like, "Don't you marry that man? Don't you even think about it." Oh my so God. you got to be careful who you connecting with. That's right. And, who, and just because, oh, you, oh, he look good and he go to church and all, you better make sure. That he has a relationship with God. That he has God. a relationship yes. with God. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We've enjoyed ourselves tonight. Yes. Uh, we're, we thank God for <laughs> all the comments and the questions and the agreement. Um, thanking God that we were able to... Um, talk on the subject of being unequally yoked because I myself even found myself in that situation and marrying that way. Mm -hmm. Marriage didn't even last a year and I received, I was saved now and the person was professing to be saved of course and then the same scenarios of you know trying to tear us away from God and from Christ and then I got the answer that he wasn't my husband from God after being married. So it's important that we wait on God for the answer, what it is, if we're seeking him, is this the one that I'm to spend the rest of my life with? Because you're not in favor of divorce. So this may get hard, but I want to have the stamina to be able to stand in the midst of affliction oppression oppression and persecution i want to be able to stand mm -hmm. amen I, there's another question all right that's right that wasn't a question it was a comment it, it, everybody's spiritual ain't they mm -hmm. praise god but do you have a relationship mm -hmm. do you go to church mm -hmm. do you pay your tithes mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. do you know god do you pray? Yes. Do you have a relationship? Do you fast? Do you fast? Yes. Do you, do, do you talk to God? <laughs> do you mention the word of God? Yes. And you know, people get caught up in stuff mm -hmm. where, oh, well, he reads the Bible and he teaches Bible class, but he's still going hanging out with the fellas, <laughs> drinking and carrying on. Yeah, instructing, Come teaching on now. in the church. And, and teaching in the church mm -hmm. or doing whatever mm -hmm. and, and telling people about Jesus, but then turn around telling his other partner what they're doing, what wow. they, how they're hanging out. Mm -hmm. But what I'm, well, all I'm trying to say is, and I, I think I preached this last week, if you're going to be real about this, be real about it. Mm -hmm. Be real with God. Don't be fake mm -hmm. because God wants people that are real yes. about him. Mm -hmm. And that's the ones that going to make it in because the one that are real and say, Lord, I, I know I have this issue. God, I know I have these things going on in my life, but Lord, I need you to help change my life, change my situation. I don't want to be the same way. Mm -hmm. I don't want to act the same way. I want a new beginning. I want a new life yes. in you and, yes. and through you. And and I was, when I, my scripture, I think, came from John. You remember my scripture, oh, John? God, you John 5, I think it was. It was John, John 4. John 4. <laughs> and uh, one, I think it was uh, 4 through 18. But the whole scripture was talking about uh, being real with the, having that light of Jesus Christ. And my wife hit on that point so much that even your husband or your wife got to see that light That's it. in you. Amen. Because if they, if you act in a certain way, how's he going to, how, how he's he, he go to church and, oh, see you acting all, like everything all right and you ain't never did nothing wrong and you praying and you, and you're like, well, she don't act like that at home. Mm -hmm. Or he don't act like that at home. That's right. Amen. But when they get in front of the pastor, oh, now they can pray. They can, <laughs> they can worship. They can do all this stuff. They but the when they're home, bear. they're the armor bearer. They the uh uh in on the praise team. <laughs> they can do all kind of stuff. They can, oh, they uh they they sitting right next to the pa they're a pastor, they're a minister. Mm -hmm. Come on now, praise God, Amen. But Amen. then when they home, their light ain't shining. Mm -hmm. 
People know a different person. Amen. The kids know a different person. Mm. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. So wow. you got to let your light shine all the time. Amen. If you of God, people tell me, well, I have to be holy all the time. Yes, if you of God. <laughs> Holiness without no Amen. man shall see the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So you don't know how God is coming. You don't know how Jesus is coming. Yes. So it's better to stay holy. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your anointing and your power on this call on tonight. We thank you for every listener, everyone that signed in, God, and we pray that you would touch the marriages on tonight. Yes, God. Father, we bind the adversary and every plan and plot he has to cause separation and division. So every seed of wickedness yes, that have been sold into the marriages, whether it's the husband or the wife, yes, we Jesus. bind it, we pull it from the root, mm. and we cast it to the pit of hell. Yes, Father, Jesus. we shall be the couples that you have called. We shall walk in your authority and in your power binding and rebuking casting down and we thank you Lord that we shall not be stray from your face we will continue to seek you daily we'll come before your throne and we thank you even now God that the husband and the wife yes, shall bind together in unity in like unity, never God. before you, they will be a force to be yes, reckoned Jesus. with they will pray they will fast and every spirit that is coming up against man Marriages, you, we bind it in Jesus' name. Yes, and we say thank that you, no Jesus. weapon formed shall yes, be able God. to Hallelujah. prosper. We thank you even now thank for those you, that are listening, God, that Hallelujah. you're touching the hearts and the minds of thank your you, people. Jesus. All Lord, stony Lord, hearts Lord, must Lord. die in the name of Jesus. We thank, thank you, Lord. God, that we can seek you. you. We can Jesus. call on you yes, while you're able to be found. Yes, and God, Jesus. those that are seeking marriage, Lord, let them wait on yes, who God. you have destined or yes, for them. Father God, they will not compromise. Yes, they will not bend. Yes, they will Jesus. not yield. They will Thank not you, fall Lord. prey to Thank the enemy. You, Lord God, oh God, we pray that all blindness come yes, from over their eyes right and now, they will God. know that that is the one that you have yes, yoked Jesus. them with. God, we thank you, Lord, that we will yes, not be Jesus. unequally yoked. Yes, oh, God, God, so the marriages that are suffering now, you, we Jesus. call unity. We call peace. Yes, we Jesus. call harmony now right in now, the God. name of Jesus. Name of and Jesus. we bind the spirit of division, right oppression, now, depression, you, things that are hey, hindering God. the home. Even the siblings thank are fighting you, against each other because they see no unity with the husband and yes, wife. God. So, God, we call for peace. Peace, we call Jesus. for harmony, harmony and your God. love to abide tonight right and now, forevermore. God. We thank you, Lord, right for now, we believe Jesus. in the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, we thank you, God, Ghost. that we can call those things that I are not as were. though they were God. Yes, so in the power and the authority of yes, you, God. we will walk through our homes uh, and we thank will claim you, our husbands back. Yes, we'll God. claim our wives yes, back. God. We'll kick everything out that hey, is not of Jesus. God. Oh, Lord, cause your anointing, your anointing oh, God, God, your spirit to flow upon yes, us Jesus. until we meet again in, in Jesus, Jesus name. name. Amen. Yeah, Thank you, amen. God. Amen. Baby, Glory to God. Tickets. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, amen. Thank you so much for joining. Please make sure you share this video that you know couples or marriages that um, need to know or what single people that you need to know to warn them not to be unequally yoked because trust me that is a relationship that no one wants to go through when we're trying to prosper and go forth and God and we have that hindrance so please share this video like it we'll let you know when our next Facebook live will be and if you would like to have individual counseling you can go to our website at the FLE ministry dot org forward slash counseling and submit your request and we will get back in touch with you but we just thank God for all that the Lord is doing. And again, this time.
topic tonight was sent to us because they wanted to know more about it. So if you have a topic that you would like for us to discuss, you can me message us. Um, Apostle LaShawn Reese, Pastor Olden Reese, oh, Unified um, Love. Unified Love. Um, we have a Facebook page, Unified Love Couples Ministry. You can go there and message us and like the page while you're there. And we just thank you for joining. We're also doing a car raffle for our ministry. So if you want to uh, buy a purchase a $20 raffle ticket for a 2019 Toyota Corolla. Um, you can purchase it. You can go to Look, you can go to my play. You can go to <laughs> Pastor Reese page. Yes. Um, you can go to Alpha. Just reach out to us and we'll make sure that someone contact you for a ticket. You can go to the Cash, Cash app, app, dollar sign FLE Ministry. Um, look on our flyers. We have the flyers on our page and all the information is there. So again, thank you for all the hearts. We love you all as well. All the thumbs up. Thank you so much oh, for yes. your support. I'm telling you, we are so excited to be able to impart to pour out. Yes. Um, I know that God is blessing our marriage and he has anointed us to be a blessing to other marriages. Yes. So please continue to hold on. Don't let go. Don't lose the faith. Glory to God because God will show up. And our book is coming. Uh, yes. Y'all got a little bit of it yeah, tonight. Got a little Praise bit. the Lord. And I'm, I want to tell y'all too, uh, we also have our Unified Love uh, Handbook. Yes. If anybody's interested in getting our Unified Love Handbook, on um, marriage, we can send a PDF can, copy, PDF and copy. that's no charge. So um, that's something yeah. me and my mm -hmm. wife put together. Um, I wrote it, and my wife just <laughs> added did her, thing. yeah, did her did her thing. <laughs> but I thank God that we was able to work on that together, yes. and it's to help marriages, mm -hmm. to help people who are getting married, who want to get married, mm -hmm. or in the process of who are already married. So we we want to be able to help you in your marriage so it can be great because it, your marriage can be yes. great and all it takes is god to Good. to move amen in it like never before praise i tell god. you we got you Oslin. we yeah, got you spread the word amen. now spread the word praise god we love you god bless good night until we meet again we'll keep you posted god bless you god bless